This is such a beautiful calculus problem with an even more beautiful solution. You're gonna love this. There's just one simple trick that transforms this completely into something so elegant. Although it looks complicated, we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of some k varies from one to n of one over n plus k. Now there are two variables here. There's a limiting variable, which is n, and we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity, and then we have a summation variable, which is k, so if you actually expand out the sum, just to be really clear, you get 1 over n plus 1 by 1 over n plus 2, all the way up to 1 over n plus n, which is just 1 over 2n. And that's going to be the sum we're looking at for each n, and then we want to evaluate it and take n goes to infinity. Now evaluating this sum is going to be not necessary and also very hard. So you're going to have to do a trick to actually understand what this limit is without evaluating this sum explicitly. And the answer is going to blow your mind. So let's dive into it. So the first trick, and this is really the only trick in this problem once you understand some extra theory, the main idea is that we're going to factor out an n from the denominator. Okay, so we're going to take limit n goes to infinity, some k varies from 1 to n, of 1 over n times 1 plus k over n. So notice all I've done is I factored an n out from the denominator and I've got 1 plus k over n times n is of course n plus k on the denominator. But this sum now actually has a lot of meaning. And to understand that meaning, I'm going to draw a very beautiful graph of a function that we all see very early, which is the hyperbola. The hyperbola looks like we're going to take the function y equals 1 over x, okay, and we're going to plot this function from x equals 1 to x equals 2. Okay, so we're going to look at 1 to 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw some points between 1 and 2. Okay, so bear with me. This is going to get super cool. 1 plus 1 over n, 1 plus 2 over n, all the way up to 1 plus n over n, which is just 2, because n over n is 1. Okay, and now look at the y coordinates at each of these points. Okay, so at 1, you've got the y coordinate on the graph. Here, you've got the y coordinate is going to be 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over n, right? Because y equals 1 over x and x is 1 plus 1 over n. Then when you've got x equals 1 plus 2 over n, your point on the graph is going to be 1 over 1 plus 2 over n. Okay, so this is all well and good, and now you observe that you're seeing this in this expression. Because if you actually just isolate this, right, I'm just going to look at this expression here, it's actually equal to f of 1 plus k over n divided by n, right? 1 over n times that, because f of 1 plus k over n is 1 over 1 plus k over n. If you're enjoying my content so far, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really makes a huge difference for the algorithm and shows such beautiful math to so many people, which is my goal to change lives through math education. Now, getting back to this, notice that this expression, 1 over n times f of 1 plus k over n, well, look at this. This is going to be the area of a rectangle. So I can draw this rectangle here, its base is going to be 1 over n, and its height is going to be f of 1 plus 1 over n, right? So its height is going to be f of 1 plus 1 over n, and its base is going to be 1 over n. So the area is going to be this expression when k is 1, and then you can go to k is 2. So we can draw another rectangle, and this time its height is going to be f of 1 plus 2 over n, which is 1 over 1 plus 2 over n, and again its base is going to be 1 over n. So again, you have a base of 1 over n, but here you have a height of f of 1 plus 2 over n. Now, if you add these up, as k varies all the way from 1 to n, then at the nth point, you're going to get this rectangle. Again, it's going to start at 2 now, and its height is going to be f of 2, which is 1 over 2, and its base is going to be equal to 1 over n again. So what you're doing when you're taking this sum is you're just adding up the areas of all these rectangles. You're taking this area, this area, this area, etc. Okay, it's always base times height. Okay, so you're always adding up these areas, and you've got n of these rectangles which you're adding up the areas of. Now, as n gets more, bigger and bigger, these rectangles get thinner and thinner. It's going to approach the area under the graph of this function, y equals 1 over x from 1 to 2, right? So in this case, you know, you sort of see, okay, there's this excess area which you're not taking care of, but once our rect which I just shaded in red, but once our rectangles get thinner, like we split this rectangle into two pieces, then the excess area is going to get a lot smaller. Instead, the excess area is going to be this area here, 
Okay, so you kind of get the picture. But the point is, this is actually the area under the graph from 1 to 2 of 1 over x, which is what we call the definite integral. If you haven't seen that before, don't worry. It's just a further concept in calculus. I'm introducing it to you here in calculating this limit. It's just the area under the graph. And the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us we can find this area by taking the antiderivative of 1 over x. What function differentiates to be 1 over x? It is log x. So what we can do is we can write this as it's going to be log x from 1 to 2. So it's going to be log 2 minus log 1. Okay, and even if you haven't studied integration, this is a motivation for studying it. Okay, it comes from you know using differential calculus, which you see next in that case, you'll understand how you can actually find areas under graphs. But if you have, you already know that this is going to be log 2 minus log 1. Log 1 is 0. So the end answer is going to be log 2. That's going to be the value of the limit. And how cool is that? How beautiful is that? Now, if you want to see lots more fun math content, as I said, please don't forget to like and subscribe and drop a comment down below. I love reading your comments. It means the world to me. And if you want to see another fun math video, here's one. It's a probability that two numbers are co-prime. They don't have a factor in common. Pick two positive integers at random. What's the probability they have no factor in common? It's it's crazy number. It's 6 over pi squared. How cool is that? Check it out here. I explain it here. And if you want to learn more calculus, check out my lectures in calculus based on my lectures at Princeton University playlist that's going to pop up on the screen here. I do everything over time. And please don't forget to share my videos. If you're really loving my content, it makes a huge difference to share my videos with friends, students, classmates, etc. Hope you have an amazing day. And I'm super excited to catch you in either of these two videos. See you soon.